So again, my name is James Donald. We're starting us all over again. No, you guys lose out on the good information on the videotape. You should have been here early. Um, so anyways, yeah, I've been in the business a long time. I've been freelancing on and off for about 27 years. And I've helped launch a couple agencies. I was one of the first premium theme designers in WordPress. I worked with a company called iThemes, which has now grown into a very big company. I was the third employee. That was a really wonderful time. It was like a roller coaster, you know, trying to figure out this whole WordPress thing, how to build themes. And, you know, does anyone know Nathan Rice from Genesis? No one knows Genesis? Okay, well, he's a guy that was our developer at the time, went on to develop the Genesis framework with StudioPress. I used to piss that guy off so bad because I didn't really know how to design for the web, so I always did, like, rounded corners and drop shadows, and that's before CSS3 and HTML5 or whatever it is now. And this can't be done. This, why are you doing this? Because Elegant Themes has it. If Elegant Themes can do it, we can do it. So, anyways, I pissed off a lot of developers. I learned a lot over the years. And uh, so I've had a lot of great successes. I've made a lot of money. I've lost a lot of money. That's my background story. I'm now the CEO of Happy Joe. I help military veterans learn WordPress, web design, web development, help them start careers and businesses in this industry and help people like yourself. So real quick disclaimer, I'm just going to tell you certain survival t techniques and advice will be presented that could result in injuries to your ego to your pride in your business mindset. Sharp instruments may be presented in this demonstration. So if you get cut, I'm sorry, do not sue WordCamp Central or Happy Joe Incorporated. This is a survival class. So I'm just going to warn you right now. All this instruction is presented by a trained professional with decades of freelance and survival experience and someone who's known to have blown stuff up. So feel safe, feel dangerous. I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> You might be screwed. So, but these lessons could save your life. So just think of it this way. Um, and I'll leave it at I will say you're going to be lucky because I was not able to bring my machete and all my Kevlar because TSA, you know, they got to ruin a good thing. So I didn't want to get a full body cavity search coming to Las Vegas. So I'm keeping it calm. No knives today. You don't have to worry. So before we talk about this, I want to talk about assessing a situation because has anyone ever watched Naked and Afraid? Yeah, I got a couple of people. Don't. Don't be, for, I'll watch it and I'm like, I can get naked, in, I get naked anywhere, it doesn't matter. So get me in the wilderness and <laughs> it's all good, you know, take off my clothes. Hey, what's up? You know, let's party down. So I love that show, you know. <laughs> I might be banned from word camps forever if I did that. <laughs> and I don't know if I'd get any tips from you guys. So, I mean, if the money starts coming out, then we'll talk. You know, you start pulling up dollar bills and we're a fair game, you know, so. Uh, Naked, you know, Naked Afraid is a cool show. Uh, Man vs. Wild, that's another show. Of Bear Grylls, we'll, we got some good stuff about him in there. But, uh, you know, let's talk about in a sur survival situation. You have to assess the situation, right? The first thing that happens is you get into that situation, your car breaks down in the desert of Las Vegas, Nevada, which I don't know how much, it looks like there's a lot of desert here, you know. But anyways, so what do you do? Do you scream for help? Do you start waving a white flag, whatever? you got to assess the, assess the situation. And normally what they do is they start thinking, okay, what do I, what do I have on me that I can use? And so, you know, I always kind of carry, like, some survival stuff. You know, you got, I got some waterproof matches and some fire starters, some cotton balls, which my wife said looks disgusting because they're brown, but they'll start a fire, and you can plug a wound with them. So, I mean, you know, i got some pretty good gear here that might work for that. I've got some water purification tablets, so if you need to, you know, help your coffee out there or something like that. That's going to help you in a situation. It's going to make it drinkable, stuff like that, so you don't, you know, get the runs, and nobody wants the runs. I happen to carry around a, a rubber tube. Now, you can use this thing to siphon water. You can use it as a tourniquet. You can make a catheter out of it, or you can use it as an enema tube, you know, if you're backed up. Just saying, you know, there's a lot of practical purposes for this thing. Um, in fact, you know, this, this could be a prize if you guys want it. I haven't used it for an enema tube, so don't. He's like, oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> You know, you, you can carry stuff, you start assessing the situation. What I have, I got some paper clips and I've got some, some clothes pins, stuff like that. I can make fishing tools out of that or I can sew up myself like Rambo did if I cut myself open. And then, you know, golly, I got a belt on me and, you know, I could spank somebody for getting out of hand today. So if you guys do get out of hand, you know, might have to whoop you. But, you know, you got a web belt. So, man, this will make a tourniquet. You can make a weapon out of it. You could slide down a rope like they do in the movies and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, I always try to carry an extra T-shirt or something. Because you never know, you know, like in, you might need a t-shirt, you might need, you know, stuff it in your sucking chest wound or something like that. Or you might give it out free swag, you know, if someone wants to have a free t-shirt, if that size doesn't fit you, you can have it. So, I mean, all kinds of practical things. So, how does this apply to your situation? Okay, this guy's talking about survival. I'm getting bored. What kind of skills do you have as a freelancer? What kind of skills do you have? What, 
you want to succeed in business, you want to be a successful freelancer, what do you have that you can put to use today? Not talking about what I want to be one day or what I hope to have, you know, because I talk to people all the time, I hope to learn PHP. I don't know why you'd want to learn PHP, but some people love that. I blow it up. I hate it. CSS, HTML, JavaScript. What are some of the other ones, Carrie? I know you're like a super geek, you know. You're like laugh, and she's like, oh, I love PHP. She, did, she helped my, with my presentation on Friday and did a great job. And I love to do HTML. I hate it. I just cannot stand it. But what skills do you have right now that you can use? Because a lot of people think, I want to have a skill one day that I can make money from. But you have a skill right now that you can put to use. It's OK to think about the future, but think about right now. Where do you want to be? In a survival situation, you've got to think about that. Whether you're actually in the desert, in the woods, in freelancing, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Because, you know, if you're in that situation, the end goal is to be successful or to survive or to get back to civilization. But if you don't know where do you want to go, how are you going to ever get there? So that's something you need to know when you assess a situation. How do you know when you're going to be safe? So many times people say, we want to be successful, but they can't define what success means. So what does success mean to you? And you need to define that in order to be successful as a freelancer. Is it when you make $100,000? A million dollars, when you can travel, when you can go to every WordCamp on the planet. What does that look like for you? That's the thing that you need to understand. And then I've missed the first one. Who can you trust with your life? Because one of, one of the things we'll talk about here in a little bit is some, uh, some pretty sad stuff. So I'm all chipper right now, but we're going to get in some kind of sad stuff here in a little bit. So I might cry and, you know, go throw you for a loop. But who can you trust with your life and business? Because as a freelancer, you need to have people who can have your back. Friends, family, colleagues. You know, they talked about yesterday about community here, and they challenge us to go out and meet people. So have you built any community this weekend? Because you need people who can help you when you're in the wilderness. Because if you don't, you won't survive. And they need to know where you're going because they always tell you, like when you're heading out, driving through the desert or somewhere you've not been, even though you have one of these great, wonderful cell phones, we know they don't always work. The GPS doesn't always work. The car will break down. People need to know that you went somewhere. So if you can't be found, they have an idea of where you might be. Start a fire. I love this. So next thing they tell you in survival is you've got to start a fire, right? And, and by the way, all this is practical. So if your car breaks down in the desert today and you don't remember any of this, you're screwed. I mean, this will help you live, and, you know, unless you got 911. But you might not have 911. So and it also applies to freelancers. So thank you. You get a dual-purpose survival lesson today. Fires must be built. And when I'm talking about fires in the freelancing world, it's a great brand. If you don't have a great brand, you're not going to survive. If you, if you can remember one thing today, well, there's going to be a couple things, but a great brand goes a long way. You must have a great brand. You want to be seen. Great brands are mesmerizing, and they're enchanting. Like when you build a fire and you're out in the woods, if you, who, who goes camping here? And you sit there and you build that fire. How many, off, how many times do you just sit there and you just, you just watch the flame? It's like no one even speaks. It's like cavemen, women. you're just, ugh, ugh, fire, you know. Great brands are the same way. They, they draw us in. They're enchanting. And, you know, when I think about enchanting brands, I think about uh, Born Creative. They're in the WordPress community. They've done a fantastic job of building brands because they help their clients. They care about their clients. They educate them. They're always helping people in the community to build their business. They do great work. So, you know, when you talk about enchanting, people know who Born Creative is if you're usually around the WordCamp's WordPress community. Their clients know who they are. A fire can keep you focused and warm about your vision. Again, in a metaphor, branding, if you have a great brand, it keeps you focused. If you believe in what you're doing, it's going to keep you going when the nights are dark. And like for me, it's Happy Joe. My brand is Happy Joe now. And there's days where I want to quit. I want to give up. I don't know what's going to happen. But because of my brand, it keeps me going. It keeps me focused on that fire. It keeps me going when I don't know if there's going to be any hope. Fires help you be seen, and people need to see you. So here's the deal. If you're going to freelance, if you're going to have an agency, if you want to have a career, people need to see and know you, right? If they don't, you're not going to get any work. So over the course of the years, I've never done any advertising or marketing. Everything's come from word of mouth. So um, that helps me be seen because I do great work for my clients and the people I work with. You have to build a brand. You have to build a reputation. You have to build credibility so you continue to have that work rolling in. Otherwise, the well is going to dry up, the fire is going to go out, and life will cease as you know it. And fire can protect you from the animals. I don't know why I threw that in there. I just thought it was cool, you know, because you uh, get the fire. No, I think, yeah, hey, you know, I think there's a lion out in the woods, so I'm going to get this fire, you know. 
it scares them off. So let's, what is a great brand? I had to throw this in there because that was in my other present. Okay, love or hate Miley Cyrus? Who, who loves Miley Cyrus? No one? Come on. Come on. Be on. I love Miley Cyrus. Who hates Miley Cyrus? Go ahead. Raise your hands if you hate her. So everyone else is like, uh, I don't know. Okay, so here's the thing. Used to be that cute little girl that my daughter watched when my daughter was a princess, and then she kind of turned into a monster and went on off the deep end. But here's the thing about Miley Cyrus. She's known, right? She set herself on fire. People come to watch her. If you've seen any of this stuff from the VMAs or whatever it was a few weeks ago, as crazy as she is, people are talking about her. So she's built her brand. She's done something. She had to switch from the good little girl image because that wasn't selling anymore. And why? I mean, you already got millions of dollars. I don't understand that. But hey, whatever. You know, whatever floats your boat. Let's go crazy. That's going to be my new thing. She's, she's built a brand. Donald Trump, you know, you think about the, the, the presidential running stuff. You know, he's polarizing. And I like the guy because he says what's on his mind. And I guess, you know, I'm kind of the same way. And my wife said, James, you can't always say what's on your mind. I don't have the money like Trump, so I guess I should be careful. And, you know, <laughs> but I like it because they're setting themselves up. They're branding themselves. They're standing out of the crowd. And there's all these other brands. There's all these other people who never get seen. So if you want to be successful in freelancing or as an agency, people need to see you. You need to set yourself on fire and burn so people see you. So find food and water because you're not going to survive without it. So in a survival situation, you, water's important. I'm going to have some right now because, man, I'm getting thirsty. Are you guys getting thirsty? It's like subliminal stuff. You're getting thirsty. <laughs> trying to serve us. Okay. So if you don't have food and water, if you don't sustain yourself, you're going to die. That's it. I think it's three days without water, three weeks without food. You don't have it. You're screwed. You're dead. Boom. You don't survive. When I'm talking about food and water in the freelance world, I'm talking about money because we all want to make money, right? Who wants to make money? All of us want to make money. If you don't make money, there you go. And that guy's like, yes. If you don't make money, you're not going to be around for the long haul. You've got to have cash flow. And proper nourishment requires the right calories. So when you're talking about food, you know, the right money sustains your lifestyle. If you're not making enough of it, you're not going to be around. Uh, it also means no discounted or free work. And I know you know, it depends on where you're at. We had a question on Friday saying, well, what if you're just starting out? You might need to do discounted free work to build up a portfolio, and I get that. But if you're going along in life and you want to build a sustainable business, you can no longer do free work. So repeat after me. I, I will, not will not do free work. Free work. I, will not I will not discount, discount my, work. my work. I'm going to make Money. Money. Yes, okay, good. Don't ever forget that because that was a hard thing for me. Starting out, I wanted to give everything away for free. I didn't feel I was good enough to do the work. I didn't have any value. My wife's like, you're really good. You're, you should be really confident in yourself. You're a great artist. You're a great designer. I don't know. I should give it away for cheap. I should do discounted because we need to make money. We need, I'm tired of eating these ramen noodles and these MREs. And she's like, you're really good. You're really good. You're really good. And all of a sudden, I got that artist ego. I'm like, I'm God's gift to the design world. And I became a monster, but I started making money, and then I had to get kicked down a little bit. So, anyways, there's, there's a thing about confidence in all this, too. You know, the more confident you are in yourself, the more money you'll make because you believe in yourself. But this is a hard topic for a lot of people in the freelance world. And, you know, a lot of people probably thought I was going to talk about what we should charge and stuff like that. You just need to charge. You need to charge a lot more than you're probably thinking right now. But right now, I'm just trying to convince you to stop giving away for free because you won't be around. Food and water are valuable resources. So are your talents. So we talked about this at Friday at our WP boot camp. You have a skill. So if we're talking about the assist, assess the situation, you have skills right now. They're valuable. They're worth something. You can make money from them, whether it's PHP, design, project management, sales, um, standing on the corner with the flip in the sign, you know, you, you, if you can draw people in, you know, into the parking lot, that's worth something, right? You guys all have a value, and you need to charge for that. You have a talent, and you need to make money from it. And tainted food is worse than no food. So, you know, in a survival situation, they'll say, okay, you need to find something to eat. And I got a great picture here. So hopefully you know, any vegans and vegans in here or vegetarians might be offended by the next photo, but sorry. Uh, but tainted food is worse than no food. So bad clients, if they suck, discard them. Get rid of them. They'll give you dysentery. You will have the craps. Do not work with bad clients. If you got a feeling that this meat is tainted, walk away from it. Do not work with those people. They will suck the life out of you. And I've had many of those people, and sometimes someone still makes it through the, you know, my little process and ends up being the client from hell or something that just sucks the life out of me. If 
fire them. Get rid of them. It's not worth the money. So if you are a freelancer, Bear Gorillas, you know, he's down there and he's like, oh, I think this meat's good. It doesn't stink. And he, I, I got to eat. And that's how hungry you got to be as a freelancer. Okay? Just got to be honest. A lot of people say they want to freelance and they want to make money, but they're like, eh, I don't know. Maybe on some time. I don't know if I want to work today. It's the weekend. The bowl game's on. I could go have a beer. You want to survive, you got to eat the meat. You got to jump in there and you got to be hungry. You got to want that business. You got to want to grow your business. You and I know it's all nasty, but get, get beyond the maggots and the stench and the smell. It's, it's effective, right? I'm just saying. So be that hungry to get in business. Now build your shelter. You got to have a shelter. And then when I'm talking about shelter in this context, it's your body. And, you know, people are going to be shocked. I told you when we started this with the disclaimer, and those that you walked in late, you might get offended by some of the stuff I say. Your body's your house. If you don't take care of it, you're not going to be in the game long term. Just not. So for me, it looked like for so many years, I sat behind a computer and did this in a dark room, sucking down sodas, and then going in and have a bag of food from McDonald's or Burger King or something else like that, spend another five or six hours in the dark, drinking more soda pop, eating chips, going back to the McDonald's, getting some more sack food, and I got fat, I got stressed, a lot of things. I started having health complications. I've had more EKGs in the last two years than probably any human on the planet. And don't say anything, my wife, my Don Edda. So um, I thought I was having a heart attack. My di dad died of a heart attack at 51, just suddenly. And the guy like smoked like eight packs of cigarettes a day. And after he died, I was going through his wood shop. And the dude like had ding dong packages in there and cigarette cartons and pop bottles and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, so every time like, I, I get acid reflux, I'm like, oh, God, I'm having a heart attack. I need to go to the ER and get on WebMD. And, of course, everything on WebMD tells you you're dying. So then I go into panic mode. I'm like trying to diagnose everything. I should go to the doctor. I should go to the doctor. I should go to the doctor. My wife's like, the doctor you need to see is a psychiatrist. And it's probably true. <laughs> it's, all, it's all in my head. Um, but you need to take care of your body because the thing is, it breaks down. Like right now, true story, over the last two months, my hands will just start going numb. Carpal tunnel, I'm guessing, you know, but it's just like weird. My hands start tingling, can't feel them. But I sat behind a computer for 30-some years and not taking care of myself. I will say, over the last two years, I made a conscious effort that I was going to get healthy. And so I was weighing between 215, 220 pounds, and now I fluctuate between 185, 190. I lift weights all the time. So I lost 30 pounds, started putting on muscle, and feel a lot better. And, you know, I'm not saying that to brag about myself. But I'm going to tell you, it, it directly affected how I did my work. I was more confident in myself. I was more energetic. I was able to talk to clients better. Before, I was just like lethargic and tired and cranky all the time. And I'm still kind of cranky at sometimes, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, but changing my health habits dramatically affected my workflow and made me better at what I was doing. So all that being said, there's a time to move. There's times to remain still. You need to do that. You need to get away from your computer, take regular breaks, take care of your body, eat healthy. doesn't mean you got to be like Brad Pitt or Angelina Jolene or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. Just try to be healthy because, you know, if you're smoking 20 packs of cigarettes a day and sitting behind your computer having pops all day long, there's a chance that you're going to die early and you're never going to make that money or have that lifestyle that you want. Accept your limitations. Now, we all have seen man versus wild, or most of us have, and I like when Bear Grylls is like, oh, we can walk three days around you know, this mountain over here, or we can just, you know, take my shoestring and climb up the side of the damn mountain. And I'm like, okay, this is stupid. I am not climbing the side of a mountain. I'm scared of heights. So first of all, I'm not going to do it. Oh, you can do it in a survival situation. Okay. Accept your limitations. If you don't want to climb a mountain with a shoestring, don't do it. And the same thing applies to your freelancing business. Don't get into things that you're not comfortable with. Don't, you know, believe that you have to do PHP because everyone around you is saying you should do PHP. If Russell's talking about you should be learning JavaScript this weekend. You're like, oh, I've made lots of money with JavaScript, and this is what you should be learning. And you're like, I don't want to learn JavaScript, but maybe I should. Don't learn JavaScript. Don't listen to someone because if that's not your thing, if you're not comfortable with it, and not to say you shouldn't challenge yourselves at times, accept that you have your strengths and you have your weaknesses, and you need to celebrate those strengths. You know, people tell you all the time you need to focus on the area of weakness. Screw that. I used to do that. I used to try to do everything under the sun. That's when I started focusing on what I did best, that I started to really excel as a business. I started making way more money, and I worked a lot less. Learn your basic survival skills and specialize in them. You can kick ass at them. So let's just say, how many, do we have any designers in here? Okay, designers. Okay, good group of them. Developers? Unicorns. Okay, so you can specialize in being a unicorn, I guess. 
So we have any project managers, sales, anything like that? Okay. So we've got a kind of a broad range of skills here. Specialize in them. Specialize in that skill. Embrace it. One of the things that I found out through, through the last 10 years of working with freelancers is that everyone wants to, they want to be the unicorn. And it's very rare. I'm just going to be honest. It's rare for someone to be that unicorn. You either have, you know, there's Brian Garter of Studio Press. He's one of those rare unicorns where he can design well and he can code well. But very few people can do both. You're either a designer, developer, you're analytic, you're a project manager, you're an SEO person. Stop screwing around trying to make yourself something that you're not. Because you're going to find that you're miserable and you're going to find that you don't make any money. I focused on design. I started working with Bill Erickson, who is a developer. We partnered together on a lot of projects, and it was amazing. So accept your limitations, embrace your strengths, forget your weaknesses. Perform first aid. This is where it gets sad. This is, this is the hard part. So Cordy Miller wrote a, a great article about a month or two ago. He's the CEO of iThemes about mental health. And you can look it up. Cordy Miller is crazy on Google or something like that, you know. Um, but he wrote something, mental health, just Cordy Miller, mental health. And he came out and started telling people, I'm battling with these different things going on. And so I see a shrink or a psychiatrist, whatever you want to call them, on a normal basis to keep myself healthy. So, you know, the first thing I tell you in a survival situation is you got to keep your head on your shoulders. You've got to keep your head screwed on straight because if you start getting crazy and you lose your calm, you're going to die. You need to tell yourself. And you might die anyways, but you've got to stay calm in the wilderness or in the woods in order to get out of that situation because if you're freaking out, all it's going to do is consume your energy and it's going to destroy you. So Corey talks about this in, the, in our context, in WordPress, freelancing. We all go through struggles. And I can tell you, I've gone through the depression, the stress, the sadness, disorientation. They're all real and they're all deadly. I mean, even recently, within the last couple months, there's times where I'm like, why am I even doing this? Why should I be here? I don't have anything to offer the world. It sucks. Someone else is being, you know, they're in the limelight, and I should be there. They have all the kudos, and I have none. They have all the skills, and I have zero. And I think if we're going to be honest, all of us have probably felt that at some time. It's just a real situation. And you need to learn how to deal with that because it gets lonely working behind a computer. It gets lonely. How many people, how many people work alone right now are solopreneurs? Can I just see your hands? I'm always asking to scan. A lot of solopreneurs. It sucks. Even though we got Twitter and we can hop on here and we can text and Facebook and do all this wonderful stuff, we still feel way more disconnected than we should with all the technology we have. I feel lonely some days. I feel like no one gives a damn about me some days. Even though I have great community here, I have friends on Twitter, I know people on Facebook, it just feels that way. So as a freelancer, you're going to go through some dark times and you need to see help for that. You need to have friends that you can rely on, that you can talk to, people that you can trust, that you can count on who you can be real with. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, suicide's never the answer. Suicide's never the answer. And there's been two times in my life that I've held a gun in my hand and I was going to take my life because I was depressed. One time after my dad died, and I'll never forget having a 9 millimeter, and I'm like, I shouldn't be living. I killed my dad, and there's a long story about that. And then many, many years ago, as a freelancer, I just hit this dark tunnel where I wasn't achieving success, and I don't even know if my wife knows about it, but... You know, I, I love guns. I have guns in the house. I'm like, this little voice in my head starts saying, you know, your family would be better off without you. You got life insurance. They could pay off the debt and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, wow, this is kind of getting weird. I need to get some help. So I started talking to some people and say, this is what I'm going through. There are going to be those times. And I'll say suicide's not the answer because I've had friends who have killed themselves. I've buried more friends and family since a teenager than most people do in their lifetime, and it sucks. So if you're thinking about suicide, if you're that depressed, please get help or talk to someone because it's real. Ask for help. Again, talk with people you trust and remain positive when the shit gets real because it's going to get real. There's going to be times that you question your sanity in this, and I'm, I hate to bring it down a notch, but it's tough. It's tough being a freelancer. It's tough running your own business, and you've got to keep your mental capacities in order to make it through. So if you ever need someone to talk to, you can email me, james at happyjoe.org. I'll put, we got my information right there. You just want to talk to and I'll connect you with. You just got questions. Don't go down that path. Keep your mind about yourself and you'll do well. Create a survival kit. So being prepared makes all the difference between success and failure. When I'm talking about creating a survival kit, yeah, you can be like me. You can be like one of those people that has the bug out bag or go bags. And, you know, sometimes my family laughs at me because we have tornadoes. I'll say tornado because I usually say tornado from Oklahoma. And the first thing I do is I run in the garage, grab my bug out bag, and take it to the bomb shelter.
because I could survive. I got my weapons in there. I've got some food. I've got all my little good stuff, and people laugh about it. But I'm prepared. Same thing as a freelancer. Invest in the tools that are going to help you build your business. It's not an expense. Now, I'm not saying be stupid and go spend $100,000 just because you need the tools to succeed. Go out there and invest in stuff. If you need themes, if you need plugins, do that. It doesn't always have to be free. If you need to uh, invest in, you know, uh, reading materials, do that because it helps you. Read and learn from the experience of others. This has helped me so many times. Uh, talk about iThemes. iThemes puts out a lot of stuff out there that will help you build your business. Go to iThemes.com. In fact, I'm talking about the ultimate guide to starting a freelance web design business. So if you can remember the second thing, go buy this book today. It's, uh, I wish I had it when I started out. It's like 10 bucks on Amazon, right, Carrie? You know, like 10 bucks. They got a PDF. If you sign up for their toolkit, I think you can get it for free, the PDF. I was fortunate enough to be kind of a contributing writer on it. And a lot of the stuff that I know is put in that book, but also from a lot of people in the community have invested their information and their insights into it. And I'm telling you, for 10 bucks, it is well worth the investment. Because you need to have a survival kit. You need to know what you need to have in order to move forward. Learn from the experience of others. Foster great relationships. Build a community. All that good stuff. Finally, learn to navigate. What was the name of the book? Uh, Ultimate Guide to Starting a Freelance Web Design Business by iThemes. <coughs> and you can always email me and I can get you the information. So, okay, so learn to navigate. If you can't navigate out of the wilderness, you're screwed. You're never going to get out of there. You're going to stay there and you'll probably end up being bare food. So you don't want to do that. Stay and put rarely ends up a success story. So in a survival situation, you could sit there and you can say, I hope that somebody finds me. Or you can get off of your butt and you can step off into the wilderness and try to find your way. As a freelancer, you need to do the same thing. You could sit there and hope that everything's going to work out for yourself. You can wish and dream and all that kind of stuff. But if you're not willing to take action to move forward, it's never going to happen. That's a strong thing I can say today. There's a lot of people who wish and hope, but wish and hope never gets you to where you want to go. Planning your route is critical for your success, to reach your destination. You have to know where you want to go. Do I want to get over this mountain? How am I going to get there? I need to get to Oklahoma City because there are cool people like James Dahm in there. How do I get to Oklahoma City? Map it out. Whatever it takes. But don't just say, I hope that I just wander around like this and I end up at my destination because it's not going to happen. Yeah, you might take some detours. Yeah, there might be some potholes. Yeah, you might have to go back and go forward. But... Pick a destination, go for it. Launch out in that direction. Stop second guessing yourself. It's going to drive you nuts. I've done that so many times. Is this the right idea? Should I be going down this route? Should I be doing this? Just do it. Launch out. One of the things I've learned from being in the younger community when I was with iThemes is I have all these great ideas, but I'm a perfectionist and I want everything to be right before I do it. And I never launched. And so I'm like hanging around these 20, 21, 22 year old kids. I'm like, just launch it. Just launch it. Just launch it. Just get it out there. I'm like, you're stupid. You're stupid. You're stupid. You got a plan. <laughs> James, James is stupid, and I'm watching all these kids launching their products and all of a sudden making money and making money and building a business. And James is sitting over here with his little perfect idea, going broke, going broke, going broke. So <laughs> I'm telling you, get out there and launch. Even if you change directions, even if you modify your plans, just get out there and start doing it. Always press forward and only retreat if you run into a big bear. So, you know, don't get a pissing match with the grizzly bear because you're not going to win that. They tell you to play dead and all that kind of stuff, it'll eat you. Don't do that. <laughs> And bears can climb trees. Just saying, don't climb a tree, you know, because they'll get you too. And the best thing you can do is try to fight off the bear. That's what they tell you, you know, just punch it in the nose, poke it in the eye. You're probably going to die, but, you, you know. It? What's that? Did you try it? Have I tried it? Um, <laughs> no. No. I could lie. I say, yes, of course I've wrestled a, a grizzly bear. I mean, look at me. No. I haven't tried it. I've just heard that you should fight off a bear. And because I used to think, you know, you used to watch on a commercial or commercials, cartoons when you're kids, like the bear would come after them and they just lay there and play dead. And I think that works for black bears. They won't, they'll leave you alone because they don't see you as a threat. But a grizzly bear says, oh, you lay down. I got a free meal. It's a buffet. So run like hell. Um, or and if they're going to catch you, poke them in the eyes, shoot them, whatever. Um, but yeah, what I mean here is always press forward. Don't retreat. And sometimes you got to take the enemy on in the freelance business. So that's all I've got. You know, now he's telling me I only got a few minutes. We're going to go long. I don't care what they say because, <laughs> you know, we don't need the other person. So if you got any questions, and I'll be here for a little bit, so if we don't get your question right now, whatever, um, feel free to ask me why I'm up here. But expect honest answers because I don't BS people. 
And I'll try to be politically correct, but not always. But I'll, I just, I'm honest. I'm an honest, authentic guy, and I want to give you real answers. So thank you guys for being here. You want to know more about me, go to happyjoe.org, wpbootcamp.com. Two wonderful projects, but let's talk. You know, what's your questions? I want to help you guys. So with charge saying, what do you think is better, hourly nope. or flat rate? Nope. Never do hourly. Never do hourly. I'm glad you brought that up. I sell everything on value. And one of the, my talks, I'll talk about this. If you email me at james at happyjoe.org, I'll send you a free ebook, And I've got all this information. So like everything, all the most valuable lessons that I could ever teach you, I'll send it to you for free. Not a problem. And I talk about pricing there. Always sell on value. Here's why. Pricing by the hour limits you. It's limited by your time. And it's hard to raise that price. So I talk about how I used to do custom logos for $75 an hour. It used to take me 10 hours to do it. I'd make 750 bucks. Then I started pricing on value. I helped the client say, I'm going to do this awesome logo for you that's going to help you look like a million dollars. And I started to charge 2500 bucks for it. Same time, same project, 2500 bucks or $750. And I started closing like that by selling that value. Now, the cool thing is it used to take me 10 hours to do a logo. And it still does. But for this context, sometimes it only takes me two hours. So all of a sudden, I'm making $1,250 an hour. See? But if I only charge $75 an hour, I'd only make 150 bucks. So sell on value. It's the only way to go. Hourly is good for consulting. But other than that, don't screw with it. Yeah, definitely. What else? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't say I was the sharpest tool in the shed. I just said I had a tool, or I am a tool. Jeez, yeah, thanks for reminding me. Yeah, there we go. So, family would have been screwed. Well, in terms of pricing, you say project is going to be $2,000. That's a very good point. So what do you do if you, you say up a quarter price to your client and they want more changes? You need to have a contract or some, something to write that says, this is what you get for this price. If you go outside of this scope, it's an additional, you can do an hourly on that, $150 an hour, $500 an hour, or we provide you with an extra quote based on the change you want. In most cases, when people start saying, oh, can we change this from blue to green? Yeah, I can, I can do that, but it's going to cost you 200 bucks. Oh, well, we like the blue. It's, it, it doesn't become a problem. So when they have to start spending more money, but you want to be careful because some people have more money than common sense. They will pay for 10,000 revisions, and then you just never get the project done. So for me, I always say, okay, let's look at what your changes are. I usually just quote them on a, a price for the total changes instead of by the hour, and then I pad it. You know, the thing is about with your pricing, always pad your time. Mark it up 50% because there will be contingencies you need to account for. That's a smart thing to do. I just have a question for you. Like, kind of based on the things we talked about in the beginning, just like, how do you combat somebody that just keeps saying, I don't know what I want, I just know I don't want that. <laughs> Basically, like, just keep going. And uh, keep hey, you, until yeah. Hey, you, you remember the one about the, the tainted food? <laughs> well, you, when they're tainted. <laughs> it, you know, that's a hard thing, because I've had people come to me, I'll know what I want when I see it. You can go to 99 Designs because this is never going to work out. I, I'm going to tell you, nine times out of ten, those relationships, because they never know what they want. And, and your job as a designer, developer, project manager is to help them go down that path and figure out what they want. But if they start saying, because I've had these clients, I talked about Informal Cowboy, don't ever do work for them. I'm sorry to name them. <laughs> Informal Cowboy, I'm supposed to do like that. I had a client that's like, they said, you're the expert, design this for us. And we want you to do this like your old brand that I had a, a branding firm. Perfect. Client made from heaven. Ah. And then it got real. Oh, we want sepia tone photos. Oh, OK. We'll, I'll change them. No, we want black and white. Now we want full color. No, we want to go back to sepia tone. And we like that font that you had. Can we see it in another font? And I finally just had to fire. I'm like, I'm done. I'm going to get you this point. You hired me to be the professional. And they end up liking the first design, which is always happens. It's always the first one. I'm like. You don't need to see another one. The first one I deliver is always the best one. Let's not even go there. Let's stop wasting each other's time. And most of the time it works out, but there's those people that, let's see one more revision. And even in, in a design, like the very first design, you know, like mirrors you kind of get a feel, but, and then it goes to, you know, it goes to shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's, how, who's the buyer to say, it's, That's, that's, a, that's where you have to have an honest conversation with yourself and then your client. Because I'm going to tell you, I've tried to work through those situations. And honey, would, would you say I've been stressed in those situations and turned into a butthole and complain and gripe and throwing stuff? 
it just doesn't work out. It doesn't matter how much money they're paying you. It's just not going to work out. So it's better to say, you know, I might lose out some. Of course, now here's, here's how I do it. You pay me money down. We get started on the project. There are no refunds for that deposit. So if you become an asshole and I don't want to work with you, you don't get any money back. I'm sorry. You're just not the perfect client because I've booked out my time for you. So we could talk more about that. Um, if we're in a process where something doesn't work out and I feel bad about it, I might refund some money depending on how much work's done. But I'm just like, I'm done with you people. You know, you hired me to do this. You wanted to trust my opinion. I don't think I'm the person for you. And, you know, so you need to go. I'm going to recommend you to some other people. You just have to cut the... Was it the, you who told them that? Was it through the, the email or a phone call? Or how do you, how do you that's a good point. I always, I always try to hop on a call with a client. I know there's a lot of people that don't want to call people, but I'd rather, because you can't understand an email, you know, the tone of the voice and stuff. There's, yeah, and, and so I'm like, can we get on a phone call? Let's talk about this. If they won't get on the phone, then sometimes we have to do it through email. But most of the time, I get on the phone and say, I'm sorry. You know, I've tried to take this as far as I can go. I'm not the person for you. I thought we were a perfect fit. I recommend X, X, and X, and, you know, have a nice day. And I don't worry about the rest of the money. Any other questions? I knew you had one. Yeah. Now, and as somebody that is a freelancer that needs the money, you know. Yeah. But but we all need the money, and that's the hardest thing. But sometimes you don't need the stress that comes with it that bad. It, I, I'm going to tell you time and time again because this this has happened even recently. Because here's a myth. I've been doing what I do for a long time. I've done work for you know HTC, NASCAR, Walt Disney, all the. Cl you know, great football teams, collegiate football teams, all that kind of stuff. So I've had a pretty good client list, and I've done mom and pop shop stuff. So I've got a really great reputation. But there's these people who tell you, oh, you'll be booked up for years, and, you know, people are going to knock down your door, and they just want to continue to get money. That's BS, because freelancing is like this. If you're a solopreneur, unless you're building an agency and you continue to do sales, it's not going to go like this. It's going to be a roller coaster ride. So there's times where I've lowered my standards. i got to close on a job because i got to pay the light bills today. It always comes back to haunt me every single time. So now I'm just like, I'm not going to do it. If I got to go out and sell my body on the corner of Las Vegas, I'd rather do that than, I don't know how I'd get 20 bucks, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. It's just not worth the stress and the effort to deal with people like that. So it, it hurts to say no to the income, but you'll be thankful down the road because that means you can get faster to someone who's going to appreciate your skills and what you're doing. And there are times where someone will ask me for a revision or slight change, modification. If it's a five minute deal, I'm not going to nickel and dime people. I try to, sorry, we'll get done. I don't nickel and dime people. But if it starts to be like, we have another five minute change, and another five minute change, and another five minute change, then I'm like, I have to charge you for that. And all, all the people I work with, like, we understand that. So, again, like Carrie said, set your boundaries and your rules. Do we have to end? Do, who's coming up next? <laughs> Question. You, you just, you, you take me off the stage. I'm going to keep going. He's like, oh, he's giving me that eye. I'm going to get beat up today. Absolutely. Yeah. It, what's, what's the name of that book? Pump, pump, pumpkin Plant? Pumpkin Plant.
I love it. Absolutely. Good good stuff. What were you going to say? Again. <laughs> 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 at the Thanksgiving dinner table, so you'd want to sit across from that person if there's a problem. Yeah. It's not important to know if it's bad or good. I mean, eventually it all turned out. It all worked out wonderful in the end. Thank goodness. However, you know, I mean, I'm just finishing school, you know, and it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and sometimes you compromise, like, because you're probably trying to build a portfolio and show people what you can do so you can actually make a living. And I get that. Here's what I say about family and friends. Don't ever do work for them because it sucks. I agree. But, and not to say that you did, and I've done, and the thing is, not that you shouldn't write a contract just like you would with a client. Here's what I'm going to do for you. Here's the value it would be. I'm doing it for free. This is what you get. We don't go beyond this. Always write a contract out because if I do anything for anyone that I know, it's the same thing as a client. We have a beginning and the end. This is a relationship. This is what is valued. All that kind of stuff. You, you, you need to. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a great thought. Thanks for sharing that one. That's excellent. Other questions, other thoughts? What are your top five things you wouldn't do when it comes to desperate times or desperate measures? Five things I wouldn't do, desperate times, desperate measures, like the type of work. Yeah, I won't do code. Ne never code. I'll never do that. Uh, so I'm not going to do it for free, and I'm not going to do it for cheap, because if you need to close on work anyways, you shouldn't be doing it for free or cheap. So I guess those are the same things. And that's a good question. Uh, I'm not going to do any work, just a second, I'm not going to do any work that I'm not comfortable with, because I've done that before. Like, yeah, I can kind of tweak this theme, or I can modify that plugin, and then it ends up costing me like $10,000, and it was a $200 project. So stay in your comfort zone always with your services. So I'd say don't do it for free, don't do it for cheap, and don't do stuff that's outside your comfort zone. I don't know. It don't work for friends and family. But I will go work on the corner or I will get naked for money. So I mean, <laughs> there's no shame in my game. Well, you're in the right zone. <laughs> hey, true story. I walked to Nude Beach in St. Martin like this year. We went on a cruise. My wife went on a cruise on our business. Everyone was like, you won't do it. I'm like, it's a once a lifetime opportunity. And so I, I dropped my drawers and strutted my stuff on the beach and it was very free. <laughs> It was a little awkward, and they said no cameras, and I'm, taking a, I'm doing a selfie by the sign, and everyone's like, you can't take a picture. I'm like, it's me. It's not like I'm taking a picture of you, so. Sorry. Did you ever outsource? Yes, absolutely. Here's, here's a good book. I want to recommend this. If you, one, uh, one other book you should take away from today, The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. The E-Myth, and it's sometimes E-Myth Revisited. What he teaches is you should be working on your business, not in your business. So whether you're a solopreneur, if you're a designer, developer, find someone to do your design development because you can't ever grow a business if you're working in the business. It's always going to limit your time. So you take off, you come to WordCamp for two or three days, you're not doing any work, you're going to be three weeks behind when you get back into the office. Start outsourcing as soon as you can. Find someone who can work for you and you can grow your business. And that doesn't mean you can't do development or design or your other task, but you need to find people who can do the work for you. Absolutely. Okay, I think it's time. So I'll be in the hall, hanging around, all that kind of stuff. I don't want to make all the other